Just give it a few seconds. Okay. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, greetings uh, and welcome to the fifth session, um, the uh, second uh, BAF Summit. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, invite Prasanna Lohar, who is the president of the India Blockchain Forum, and Juan Zabayos uh, of the Alastria Blockchain Ecosystem in Spain uh, to join us. Uh, great to have you both with us. Uh, Prasanna, if you could uh, kick off the proceedings, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh so uh, greetings from the day. Thank you so much for uh, inviting uh, India Blockchain Forum for uh, this wonderful conference. Thank you, Professor Nassim. So I will just share my screen. That's visible, right? Yes, it is, yes. So uh, yeah, so today we'll talk uh, uh, at this conference about uh, uh, crypto asset uh, uh, policy making and the future of a global economy and what has really went uh, very nice in the last few years, what went wrong and some of the recommendations so that this recommendation could be useful for uh, formalizing some of those crypto, global crypto regulations and uh, the way I had a good adoption. So I think so everybody knows about internet, right? So internet is uh, one of those foundational technology which has come in our life uh, post 90s and what we can see uh, is not a one innovation, but a lot of path-breaking innovation, which we have seen since 1995 till now. Uh, uh, Google Play, you talk about Facebook, uh, every business model, every operation model is built on internet. But somehow what we could see, there are some challenges on internet, the kind of a trust uh, we need between ecosystems, uh, the kind of a transparency which we need in uh, various sectors, not only in uh, banking, but also governments and every out there. And that is how we bring on another technology we typically call as a blockchain, which is another foundational technology. Typically started way back in 2008 with a with the formation of a Bitcoin, which we call it as a God's protocol. But typically the attention of a Bitcoin was to create a better financial ecosystem. But eventually what we could see, it really didn't went well uh, in, in the direction today we have more than 16,000, 70,000 cryptocurrencies apart from uh, Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum and so on. But what went uh, right is that lot of a uh, a lot of researches, many more platforms. We came into life, and today at 2022, we talk about uh, larger companies like Facebook, Microsoft are doing a lot of researches and coming up with uh, their own path-breaking ecosystems like Metaverse, NFTs, and so on. But still, this journey will go on, right? So while this journey go on, uh, cryptocurrencies or uh, the blockchain technology, which is in uh, behind all of this, we could see why it is very, very important because it gives challenge to the ongoing uh, web to or ongoing client server based ecosystems with a low transaction cost. There is no need of extra physical infrastructure the way we have for banks uh, or there is no geographical barriers for uh, cryptocurrencies. Although you could see it eliminates the risk of the frauds and corruption because in the back end we have a technology so called a blockchain which runs based upon a various consensus protocols and multi-party or decentralized ecosystems. So primarily it gives a lot of uh, uh, benefits uh, around uh, 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 cryptocurrencies uh, and it's a very good momentum. It's an unstoppable momentum. We could see some of the countries like Malta or you talk about Estonia, you talk about uh, uh, El Salvador, they are really relying on the cryptocurrencies. But cryptocurrencies is something like a, one of those use cases on the larger highway so-called blockchain. And this uh, use case of cryptocurrency is, uh, I think, needs a lot of a control, a lot of breaks. So, so far, what we have seen in a disruption into finances, Bitcoin, since then, thousands of cryptocurrencies, some of those parallel economies coming in our life, so-called uh, uh, Facebook has come with Libra in 2018. Some of these projects has got vanished. Uh, there are furthermore many use cases on top of our cryptos. We could see metaverse, NFTs and DeFi. And these are real use cases. We could see the market cap for metaverse or NFTs or DeFi. These are the ecosystems which are going to build future futuristic use cases. But at the same time, you could see BIS, right? Banking International Settlement, which comes with some kind of a goal to create a better financial ecosystem for whole world. So innovations like central bank digital currency, where we could see almost nine plus countries are live 
or there are 95 plus central banks are doing POCs pilots around the same technology, which is the back end of a cryptocurrencies. Although India is not an exception where uh, recently Indian government announced they are going to come with a, a digital rupee, which is a code name of a, a CBDC, where four banks are already doing POCs and pilots. So these are all things are momentum, which we are uh, seeing in the world, right? But there are some gaps, right? There are some crypto uh, setbacks, which we could see last few years, primarily around the uh, uh, regulation, right? So although it, it's a, there is no regulation, we could say uh, if uh, some crypto exchange is coming in our life, they should follow these norms. They should follow these processes. Anybody can come and start their crypto uh, exchange and, and crypto uh, currencies could be part of those exchanges. I think the challenges which we could see last few years around the scalability, security thefts, Ponzi schemes, right? Some everybody knows about uh, Terra Luna kind of things. There are some millions of hack has been happened in the last few years, and nobody's being hold, right? For an actual uh, who has really done it, right? Uh, there are too many cryptocurrencies. If you ask Indian context, there are hardly 100 plus banks, right? And you can open a bank unless you have a, a right regulation, right license. I think that kind of ecosystem is really lacking onto the uh, crypto world. If you look at the global acceptance, not all countries are accepting the way we accept all kind of a currencies, fiat currencies and dollar currencies. Uh, there are very few countries in the world who accept only cryptos. And, and if you lo talk about the market crash, it's always unpredictable. Like the way we have seen 2017 up and 2018 down for Bitcoin or recent days, uh, cryptocurrency down. We really can't really judge how it really happens, right? Uh, and moreover, when you talk about a uh, larger use case like uh, 17 sustainable goals, these cryptocurrencies are really not really helping because they take a lot of a mining kind of a stuff, right? Although there are a lot of research are happening. These days we have heard about a merge which has happened for Ethereum ecosystems. While there are some setbacks, there are some up uh, positives also for uh, cryptocurrencies. There is a lot of uh, technology improvement is happening. We could see Bitcoin has folk been multiple times or uh, we uh, talk about merge protocol, uh, merge, uh, which is for uh, Ethereum, which is a start of a uh, furthermore uh, uh, ecosystem, which Ethereum will bring on. Uh, there are some countries has bought in regulation, right? There are global entities like SECs, OECDs, and furthermore at uh, India also RBI or uh, uh, BIS, everybody's participating to by giving their inputs. But as a Largely, there is no single entity who is really taking all countries together and seeing uh, adoption of the cryptocurrencies. But at the same time, positives, central bank digital currency, which is another path-breaking use case, could be helpful for cross-border uh, cross payments. Uh, it, it depends upon whatever implementation we do, uh, whether retail or wholesale. Uh, other positives like global acceptance. There are some countries like Singapore or uh, uh, Malta uh, or UAE, in fact, they're accepting uh, cryptocurrencies and relevant business models. I think furthermore, it will they will enhance their own uh, uh, regulatory guidelines and so on. Investments, if you could see the kind of investment which has happened. Typically in India, I can name five companies who are unicorn and backed up by cryptocurrency, right? Say, take example, Polygon or CoinDCX and so on, right? And it's a big, 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 big uh, uh, boom around Metaverse and NFT. And Metaverse and NFT is a reality. Or you talk about the blockchain technology, tokenization is reality. Uh, not only other ecosystem, but banks are also now looking at, at how they can tokenize KYC or uh, records or uh, loan records and so on. So while we had some setbacks, we have some positives in the crypto world. And what we see, it's, a, it's an unstoppable ecosystem. So these non-financial players are becoming instrumental for millennial customers. A gaming ecosystems are dependent upon uh, and it's a, which is kind of another ecosystem which should be adopted by the banks. But how do you really go ahead? Let's say it's a larger question for us, right? How do you really take care of a uh, end user with uh, robust guidelines, practices, the way we have in a banking, right? So I think there are many companies today are taking a lot of efforts. Uh, you talk about IMF, uh, International Monetary Funds or World Economic Forum, OECDs, or uh, you talk about uh, the financial stability uh, a board, or ECB, Financial Action Task Force, SEC, all of these guys are geared up for bringing the right regulation, right? Although everybody is trying in their own way, say example, uh, say example, OECD is coming up with some kind of a taxation. They have recently opened up some uh, some paper for uh, suggestions. Uh, FSB has been talking about uh, uh, re uh, recommendations for some of the regulations. 
ECB is talking about how do we have a, uh, a balanced approach for a regulation for crypto assets. We are looking at a more and more adoption of a CBDCs. Uh, the country G20 countries has come together and they are forming or talking about how we can really adopt uh, crypto assets uh, in a larger way. Uh, FATF, uh, G7 countries, IMF, ISO, I think you name uh, I think all of these entities are really looking in the right direction. SEC has formed another unit which will take care of uh, uh, crypto assets and relevant regulations. RBI, although says no, but at the same time, they have formalized a fintech unit at RBI, which will take care of a blockchain kind of a ecosystems. BIS, although working around CBDCs and ECB is looking at uh, uh, existing financial ecosystem, how we can have a uh, digital currency, not only CBDC, but other uh, form of uh, uh, currencies can be adopted. I think while we do this, there is a larger impact on global economy. The global financial inclusion, which was always a problem statement since we have had smartphones or a better financial ecosystem. Still, there are billions of people need a digital identity in a better financial ecosystem. That could be resolved with the help of a right regulated cryptocurrencies or a blockchain ecosystem. Uh, building a greener future, right? So although we do not need much of a physical infrastructure the way we bank needs, although there are challenges of mining, but that is also getting resolved. So we'll have a better greener future with uh, with uh, and that would be the better uh, impact on the global economy. Uh, better and a cost effective banking where we do not need intermediaries we do not need settlements uh, one of the experiment which we are doing in a in a us uh, at a block stack uh, along with a knowledge partner india blockchain forum is like how do we create a immediate settlement for a merchant which is in an integration states this ecosystem is bringing newer job market the way internet has brought in so many jobs i could see blockchain and crypto or nft metaverse will bring on a lot of jobs in in the lives uh, lowering the transaction cost, which is going to help uh, uh, for a financial ecosystems. Other impact on the global economy is like uh, supporting for uh, entrepreneurs, supporting for uh, SMEs. The SMEs which are not getting loans for uh, existing regulated entities, they will have their own ways to do that. DeFi's are those one of those examples, decentralized finance. It brings better sociality trust. If you talk about emerging countries where social trust index is quite low, I think cryptocurrency is bringing a right... Uh, a blockchain ecosystem in some of those uh, emerging countries can really help uh, uh, to bring better economy for those countries. Uh, although uh, lack of regulation is a uh, one area which is giving a lot of impact, but for sure with a with a better collaboration with some of those recommendations which I am saying, the enforcement has to be a global level, right? Companies has to come together, countries has to be come together. Recently, our financial minister also asked uh, to IMF and all, can we come together and bring on the right regulation the way uh, banks are doing better regulated ecosystem let's see how this cryptocurrency crypto exchange can learn from banks and bring a larger ecosystem for us taxing or a right regulation uh, government support and uh, asset classification these five areas can be further more studied and bring on as a bible or bring on as a standard the way we have pci dss or the way we have iso the way we have further other regulation we should bring on I think some of the countries like Switzerland, UAE or Singapore have done it. But I think global uh, global uh, research or global study has to be there. And it can happen the way uh, global crypto regulation should be comprehensive, consistent, and coordinated, the way IMF says. Uh, create an international classification, right, which is very, very important to begin with. Coordinate with the other government, other countries. Uh, reduce the negative uh, economic impact choices made in a develop uh, uh, economies uh, other recommendations like include crypto and stable coins in your policies i think the way uh, today indian government also at a sebi we are studying the impact of this policy makers should account for asset types right so which is the switzerland government has really done a very good job uh, back two three years before coordinate with each other uh, uh, a government has to work uh, work uh, closely with the other countries government and uh, reduce those negative impact which i spoke uh, just now so i think at india we have formed to address these things india blockchain forum so india blockchain forum comes with a larger ecosystem where we have government entities. sorry yes. persona we're gonna gonna have to stop you there unfortunately i, I do apologize yeah, no uh, we're, we're on a bit of a bit of a tight schedule today uh, but thank you very much for that really appreciate that some some, some thank fascinating you. uh in, inside there. Um, I would like to bring to the stage Juan Jimenez uh, Zavallos from the Alastria blockchain ecosystem, uh, who is representing Spain for us today. Uh, hi there, how are you, Juan? 
Hi, Brian. How are you? Uh, impressive presentation from Brasana. Uh, thank Very you Brasana, uh, for, for all the explanations you provided. It seems like India is the right place for, for the distributed ledger technologies and all that is happening in our favorite ecosystem. Uh, I'll share my screen while I introduce myself. Um, let me let me just be sure that you can see the PDF. My name is Juan Jimenez, as, as Brian mentioned. Um, um, I'm, I'm the CEO for, for Alastria. Alastria is a blockchain organization um, in, in Spain. It was, was, based, was, uh, was uh, originally launched in Spain. And, um, and we built an ecosystem that is quite large now. Um, it's built out of 600 members already. And hopefully I can share what I have for today. Uh, sorry about this. We're tech people. We're supposed to to do these things like easily, but it's not easy <laughs> any, anyways. Uh, I'm just sharing, I guess. I hope you can see my screen. Um, yes, in, yes. In a full presentation mode. Um, as I was mentioning, um, uh, I'm the CEO for Alastria. This is a, a, a blockchain association uh, that started in 2017. Uh, uh, it's based in, in, in Spain, but we're pretty connected with all what is happening in Europe when it comes to blockchain. Um, we are connected to EBSI, the European Blockchain Service in Infrastructure, sorry. And we're part of these seven projects that uh, are intended to vertebrate uh, a, a, a real um, digital European Union. Uh, and we really believe that blockchain can be uh, the glue and, uh, and, uh, and an enhancing technology that can facilitate that we can enjoy a true, truly connected Europe. Um, we are a non-for-profit. We are a utility. Um, we promote digital economy. And uh, we have a clear vocation of pioneering uh, this new generation of digital economic models. We want to depict ourselves as a platform that can connect supply and demand is a platform or a marketplace where where private environment but also public sector can join together and uh, can explore ways of um, uh, collaborating and um, and um, uh, promoting the digital economy um, we our main aim is also blockchain democratization as we all know uh, it, blockchain is an ascent technology is mature enough uh, but there's a still a bit of a barrier of entrance for certain players in their society to embrace this technology we're trying to facilitate this access is somehow a scary technology when you look at it because it's quite mixed with all what is happening in the crypto world uh, so we want to promote this technology as a simple technology a, a really efficient one that is fit for purpose that is a state of the art and uh, we want to catalyze the adoption of this use of technology that in Spain is uh, uh, we've seen a rise of, uh, of uh, both corporates, but also institutions and SMEs working more, more and more on top of this technology and building use cases on top of the infrastructure. We also hold networks. This is an interesting piece. In, I think it's quite the uniqueness of the of Alastria is technologically as agnostic. We promote uh, different networks from different protocols. But uh, what, what, is, what is for sure at the heart of Alastria is also bringing uh, important or irrelevant constructs as digital identity for the different players to use, uh, to use uh, uh, open source software for building their use cases. And the quite cross transversal one that we found interesting of, uh, uh, in terms of relevance for kind of everyone is digital identity. It's quite close to our heart. Um, and we want to depict ourselves also as a pioneering project to build a new society uh, in the back of the use of uh, new exponential technologies. As I mentioned, we're more than four, uh, 500 members, 21 nationalities with us. We're quite proud of this. We started very Spanish flavored, but it's not that much anymore as we have 21 uh, uh, foreign uh, uh, members, associates that are enjoying 
the power of our networks. It's, a, it's quite inclusive. It's 48% of SMEs. It's not only, you know, the IBEX 35, the, 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 the big uh, usual suspects. It's also the, 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 the different parts of the, of the ecosystem. Uh, more than 22 economic sectors, 51 public administrations, and also a relevant KPI that it's not here is that we have more than 60 universities. The academia is also with us. As I mentioned, um, we put together an infrastructure, the, 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 the part that you can see there in green, um, um, with the self-sovereign identity principles. It's a public permissioned network. I will elaborate a little bit more afterwards, but the idea is our members should be able to build the smart contracts and use cases on top. From a decentralized movement, here in the, in the, in the left-hand side of the presentation, public networks, of course, these ones are interesting. I think it's where, where the innovation comes from. We're super, super happy of what happened in the Ethereum network with the merge. Uh, actually, the, the, this week, this, this past week, is amazing piece of technology and an amazing effort of engineering what they did, flawless and with no disruption, no discontinuities. For sure, it's interesting networks that are out there and we enjoy and we are believers of public networks. But when it comes to enterprise, technology, specifically for regulated sectors like banking, like utilities, meaning energy or telcos, uh, they need something different. That is why we uh, position ourselves in the middle, in the middle of the decentralization and the pure centralization. That is something that we don't really enjoy that much. And we bring together a public permission network compatible with the current regulation, with no embedded cryptocurrency, uh, with scalability and with predictable cost of gas, which is somehow important. As this space is being crowded by the layer twos, by the polygons, the, the, the polka dots, or the algorithms, we also partner up with all of these important layer two technologies and uh, to stitch a plethora of different technological options for our members to, 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 to work on top. Now we have two networks. One is based on Quorum. We have kind of yeah, 200-ish nodes already in, uh, deployed and, and interconnected. 10 validator nodes, uh, which are the ones that are you know, devoting computational power to the, to the, to the network. Uh, and we also have uh, what we call Network B, which is Hyperledger BESU based. Uh, smaller networks, a smaller network here, but promising. Both, both of them. I uh, have uh, the Alastria ID, our identity piece deployed, ready to be used. Uh, in the BESU network is where we connect more with Europe. We're part of different projects. Uh, Trublo is one that is, uh, that is devoted to the identification of fake news and manipulated information for uh, being able to consume better quality information all across Europe. Uh, and we are also uh, participating in several tenders that I cannot disclose now, but are mostly related with the new digital money, CBDCs, digital identity, and also some other ESG uh, related projects as, 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 as one that we're trying to pursue, measuring and registering the quality of air all across Europe. Uh, an important nuance here, we are also connected with what is happening in Latin America. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the bridge with Latin America is played through Spain and uh, we're connected with Lackchain Network, that is a true network operator now, uh, connecting different parts of Latin America. Uh, their hub is in Montevideo in Uruguay and Uruguay is totally connected with this technology that I'm showing you here. As I mentioned, the tokenomic model that we are, we are enjoying here is, uh, is illimited gas for now, but once we become a true operator, meaning that we can operate networks that are not best effort, that are that are uh, reliable and accountable, that is not, we're not there yet, but we're getting there, we'll put together a new tokenomic model that can resemble really nicely the, 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 the real needs of the ecosystem. Um, we have different ecosystems and sectorals, uh, we have to reach to, to Spain and to Europe uh, uh, in a capillar way, in the small side of the house, but also in the bigger scheme of things connecting to Europe and to, and as I mentioned, to Latin America. Uh, the use cases that we have, 
this is important as well. These these ones are into production. It's not a test bed. It's not a test. It's not a. It's not a, a test net. It's a main net with 60 use cases already deployed in production, connected to agrofood, to legal, to education, to citizen participation and transparency, real estate and whatnot. But the in the right in the right hand side, you can see the nature of uh, the constructs and the smart contracts we re we're using or our members are deploying on top of our networks are mainly focused in notarization, identity, traceability, and tokenization. We're part of different uh, associations, trade associations, and blockchain associations and at international level, in ADBA, uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, Hyperledger, uh, W3C, as a, as a standardization of payments uh, uh, mechanism. And we're also part of all these plethora of uh, standardization agencies are as, as UNE, Sensenelec, ABSI, ISO, or, or E2, uh, UIT uh, in, in English. Um, we, are, as, as I mentioned, we are connected to European initiatives, um, providing our technology, and also we're, we're uh, building uh, projects uh, not only in Spain, also also in Europe and Latin America. And I think this is mainly what I had for today. The organization asked me to provide a bit of a regulatory piece of what is happening. Um, I would say that we are we are so happy of the development that we are see that we are seeing and we are enjoying uh, from the different co-legislators and regulators in Europe. Uh, being the council, the parliament, and the and the commission, pretty aligned when it comes to promoting the usage of digital assets all across Europe, this is uh, the so-called pilot regime that we were part of in the consult consultation process. The good news that is, is all, that it is is almost enacted, the, and the good news as well is that the Spanish regulator, the SEC, the Spanish SEC, adapted all the stock. Uh, broken regulation in Spain just this week to accommodate this opportunity that brings the pilot regime to the to the dealers, to the issuers, and also to the investors and to the mar to the to the multilateral trading facilities in Spain to enjoy this new regime to test the waters when it comes to apply blockchain in uh, financial markets, in fundraising, and in putting together traditional mechanisms as fixed income e and equities into this new world of digital assets. We're still awaiting for Mika to be enacted, the markets in crypto assets in Europe. We never did any effort in Spain as a pre-Mika, as maybe other countries did, as Germany or Luxembourg, for sure Switzerland, but they're not part of the European Union. Um, and they did their thing, and I think they did right. Uh, but in the meanwhile, we've been adapting the Spanish regula regula regulation, and regulators, I think they took it right, when it came to um, uh, publishing a, a, a book for registry for the CASPs, for the crypto asset service providers, this is one. Second one, they put together a new regulation when it comes to advertisement that is important also for bringing trust to the ecosystem. And now with this movement I mentioned of the SEC accommodating their processes to uh, 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 allow the usage of blockchain as a legit way of issuing in financial instruments, we really think that this is the way to go, and uh, I think this is the way to be com uh, competitive in the European landscape and more broadly worldwide. Thank you for this space here. I hope uh, that uh, that this summit is fruitful for everyone as it's, as it's been for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juan. Really appreciate that. It's a great view from Spain. Um, that And also to Prasanna, uh, the view from India. Uh, yes, that's been a really excellent session. Uh, that's uh, we're going to close it now, I believe, uh, yes. and move across to our no. to our next one in about just under just over five minutes. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys.